we're going to talk about motional EMF, the voltage, the electric potential, the EMF that's caused by a conductor moving in a B field. But first, let's review Lenz's law, which tells us something about the currents that circulate uh, because of motion with respect to a B field. Let's suppose that we have a, uh, a, a square conductor, and it's going to move from an area where there's no B field into an area where there is B field, and the B field is going to be into the, uh, into the plane here. And the question is, how is current going to behave in this loop? Is it going to go this way in the loop? Is it going to go this way in the loop? Or is it going to go not at all? Well, let's recall what Lenz's law says. Lenz's law says, first we have to establish what kind of magnetic flux there is through this surface, and then we have to ask, what is the direction of the change of that magnetic flux? And then lastly, the current that we're going to get in this loop is going to be current that would generate field in opposition to that change. So the flux in this case is going to be, well let's just remember what, what we mean by magnetic flux, right? What we mean by magnetic flux is everywhere around that area we dot the B into each little chunk of area. And, and so our, you know, our magnetic flux is through, is the the degree to which magnetic field is passing through there. And, and what direction is that magnetic field going? It's going in. And then is the magnitude of this flux, is that getting bigger or is it getting smaller? And the answer is it's getting bigger because as, as, this, as this, uh, this rectangle goes into the field, as it enters the field, uh, more and more area is exposed to that B field. So we get more and more flux. So we have flux that is into the plane and increasing. So Lenz's law says that whatever current is generated out here in this, uh, this, this rectangle has to be current that would generate B field in opposition. So we want to have B field that is going to be coming out of the plane on the inside here. We want to have B field that's coming out of the plane here. And now we have to ask what would generate that B field? So we use a right-hand rule, and the question is, if you take your right hand and you grab hold of this, this, uh, this wire on one of these places in such a way that your fingers come up on the inside, what would that look like? Well, I'm not very good at drawing hands, but I think it would look kind of like Right? Your fingers are coming up on the inside. Your thumb is pointing that way if that's your right hand. And what that means is that we're going to have current that goes around this thing like this. Now, it's one thing to just say, hey, Lenz's law causes that. Why do we have current? Oh, because of Lenz's law or because of Faraday's law. But it's also possible to think about this just conceptually speaking in terms of we're where do, why do, where does this current come from? What's generating this current? And the answer is, in order to have that current, we've got to have some electric field in here somewhere that's going to move those, uh, that's going to move that, um, move those, or we've got to have some kind of field moving those charges around. So what we're going to do is, we're just going to examine this chunk of wire right here. Motional EMF essentially is a, a way of thinking about the question of what happens if I have some kind of conductor that is moving in a B field. So let's suppose that this is a conductor and let's suppose it's moving with some velocity V and that it has some length L. And this conductor enters this B field and it's moving along and now if we think about this on a microscopic level, what happens to the charges that are inside the conductor? And if you think about it, those, those charges that are inside the conductor, they're subject to the B field. And because they're subject to the B field, they're going to experience a Lorentz force. Let's just remember what that Lorentz force is. The Lorentz force is the idea that any charge that is moving in a B field is going to experience a force that is the magnitude of the charge times its velocity vector crossed into the B field vector.
And so if you take out your right hand and you sort of go like, okay, let's see, Q times V is this way, and B is this way, you should be able to realize that, well, let's see, uh, QV cross B, my thumb points this way, that charge is going to experience a force in that direction. Okay, so that means that any little positive that's inside of this bar, any positive that's floating around in here, is going to experience a force that pushes it over to the left. It's going to get feel experience pushed that way. And we're going to pile up a little positive charge over here because they're getting pushed in that direction. And there's really nothing to oppose them. So, so we get some positive. Now, of course, if we take positives away from the rest, well, you know, there's only one place that we can take positives away from, and it isn't going to get any new positives from positives being pushed to the left, and that's over here on the right. So when I take a positive and I move it over to the left, I've got to leave a negative on the right. And so are all of the positives going to rush over to the left? And the answer, I mean, reason would say, that's crazy, that couldn't happen. But there's, a, there's an even more sophisticated answer, is that as we add up positive charges over here and leave negative charges back here, what happens is, hey, now we've got some charge separation, and that is going to induce some electric field. So we're going to have some electric field that points in this direction. So as this conductor moves in the B field, the charges inside the conductor get pushed over to one side. And because those charges move, that creates an E field back in the opposite direction. And the more charges that move, the stronger the E field is going to be until we reach some kind of equilibrium. Why do we reach equilibrium? Well, let's think about the behavior of you know, the next charge that's thinking, am I going to move or not? The next little charge that's in there is still experiencing a force, that a Lorentz force, we could call it the force due to the B field, to the left, but meanwhile, because of the E field, it's experiencing a force to the right of the E field. And every time a charge moves over to the left, the E field gets stronger, and so the next charge experiences a greater E field. And so charges are going to move until an equilibrium is established between these two forces. So charges are going to separate until the following condition is true, in which the, the Lorentz force, which if everything is at right angles to each other, we can say that this force is Q times V times the magnitude of the B field, and this, on the right, is the force of the E field, which is just the charge times the strength of the E field. So this is going to keep happening until this condition is true. But notice what's happened inside of the bar. Inside of the bar, because we have this charge separation and this E field that's pointing over here, we now have a change in potential from this end to this end. Just by virtue of moving the conductor in the magnetic field, we've set up an EMF, a change in potential from here to here, almost like it's a battery of its own. And the question we're going to ask, because we're calling this emotional EMF, is how much EMF? How much is going to be the change of potential from here to here? Well, that actually turns out not to be super hard to do because we know that the change in potential, which we're going to call the EMF here for, for uh, uh, philosophical reasons we can talk about some other time, we're going to say that this EMF is, or that, that voltage is the opposite of the integral of e dot ds, where what we're saying is that e dot ds is what happens if we integrate you know, from one side to the other side, or how about, well, let's go from here to here. And, and if this is some nice, simple, well-behaved uh, situation where the E field is uniform, why would it be uniform? Because we've got this big bank of charges over here and this big bank of charges over here. And it's kind of like in a capacitor that we, because of that, we get this nice uniform field in between these, these, uh, these, these two. And so this is going to be just the E field times... The, that, that distance there, EL. Well, but what's, we can find out what the E field is from, from up above. We can take this guy here and go like, oh, okay, how much E field is that anyway? What E field is that? That is going to be um, 
to QVB equals QE, and the Qs cancel, and so E is equal to VB, and so the EMF here is going to be, let's see, this E goes there, and so that's VB times L, VBL. So if we move this conductor in a field, that's going to create a potential difference between the ends that is equal to the velocity times the B field times the length of the bar. And that's what motional EMF is.